Lindsay here, the frugal crafter. Now I gotta be completely honest, I recorded this and then my battery died. And then, no, I recorded it. And then um, I used up, I talked for more than 27 minutes. And so my camera shut off. And so I started again and then to do like another like addition uh, and then my battery died. And then um, I, I started again and then I realized, oh my word, I've been like talking for 45 minutes and this is ridiculous. People are not going to want to watch this because they do their chores when they're watching the sat chat, when they're listening to it and they don't want to be mopping their floors for 45 minutes on a Saturday. They've got things to do. And we got things to do here. We got stuff to talk about. We've got a haul. We've got a scandal. It's like I'm a beauty YouTuber or something. I don't know. Uh, so today, first thing I want to talk about something exciting. I've been alluding to this for the last month or so, um, but actually it's been in work since like September and it is Craft World. There is a brand new website. It's kind of like a cross between Facebook and Pinterest and it's um, put on by this group of magazines or yes, one this one big magazine group in the UK. Um, you know, like uh, card making, paper craft, all those, all those uh, magazines you see at like the bookstore or in the craft store, and they've got like they're like a baggie, and they've got like stamps and dies and cross stitch patterns and all kinds of goodies. Uh, those guys. Um, so since they have a rich um, grouping of magazines and content for like you know years and years and years, they're putting so many of those projects up for free. So it's kind of like Pinterest style like that, but there's also like a newsfeed kind of like Facebook. Uh, but it's all crafty. There's crafty groups, there's um, crafty projects, there's tons of free inspiration uh, classes, and um, they have hired me on as an expert. So um, I'm gonna link my expert page down below um, and come on over, sign up for a free account. They do have a premium account, which gives you access to premium content and also um, some pretty big discounts to some of their um, like sister stores. If you're interested in that, if you do a lot of shopping at some of these places, you might want to consider that. Um, but you definitely check it out for free and there's so much to see for free. Um, I think you could spend years doing the projects. All the projects are professionally photographed, high quality, because they come from the magazine. So uh, lots of lots of really nice inspiration. I'm so honored that they have chosen me to be an expert and I will be doing a live class uh, at 7 a.m. Eastern time. Uh, Wednesday, it's gonna be so early. Oh my gosh, I gotta have makeup on at seven in the morning. What is this, like work? What is this, like a normal job people go to? I'm not cut out for that, <laughs> but I'm gonna try. Um, and it was supposed to be 8 a.m. except that um, my kids are doing a hybrid learning thing and they're, some days they're at school, some days are at home. It's like two days at school, two days at home, and, and then one day everyone's at home from like, they, they divide the kids up by the letters, of, by their, la their last names. But since my kids go to different schools, their their days are different. So at my daughter's school, they have the first half of the, the alphabet Monday and Tuesday, then everyone's home on Wednesday, and then Thursday and Friday, the other half of the alphabet go. And then um, at my son's school, they do like Monday and Thursday is pod one, Tuesday and Friday is pod two, and everyone's home on Wednesday for like additional help and stuff online. And so um, I knew all the kids were home on Wednesday, and I didn't, they didn't know if they were gonna have Zooms at eight in the morning and I'm out in the country. So we're lucky if like two of the kids can be on Zoom at once. It's definitely can't handle like me live streaming too with any sort of quality at all. So it's just like, I, I can't, I can't do that if the kids are gonna be online and their schedule is like the teacher could decide to Zoom, they could decide to just email an assignment. It's just too up in the air. So I'm like, oh, I could do an hour earlier uh, because it's 1 p.m. their time. Um, and man, that's gonna be like, uh, 7 a.m. That's gonna be like 3 a.m. in California, man. Oh man! Luckily, it'll be recorded and you can catch it later. Um, but uh, I'll be bright-eyed and bushy-tailed this Wednesday, making a making a project. And I'd love to tell you more about that, but I don't have it all planned yet. So, I mean, I've got it planned. It's a surprise. <laughs> and if you believe that, <laughs> I got some bridge to sell you. Um, what else? Oh, okay. So, so this week. Um, uh, I was, I'm always talking about my supplements and by the way, last week when I was ta telling you about my, my wonderful eyesight and how I can read things way out here now, 
that was a joke, and everyone's like, what are you taking for your eyes? I'm like, I'm 44, I have the 44-year-old vision where you see, you focus way out here, you read your menu way out here at the restaurant. <laughs> oh, guys, I feel so bad. Everyone's like, I'm going to take Lindsay's supplements, so I'm going to fix my eyesight. But I've been taking B-Complex, and we ran out. And so my husband had ordered some on Amazon, but it was going to be like eight days since it got, like, until I got here. So I'm like, well, I will run into the Dollar Tree, and I will grab a bottle of B-Complex. I mean, they're probably not as high quality as what I'm ordering ordering online, but um, it'll get us over the hump because like I go from like I can't remember to take a, a vitamin to I am supplement queen, I am all vitamins, team vitamin, you know? And um, so I, I feel like I'm yelling, I'm so sorry, because uh, if you have headphones on because you're vacuuming and you're like, oh my gosh, calm it down, Lindsay, vacuum in here with the headphones on, it's loud enough. Um, so I, I go in there for the vitamins. But one does not go into the Dollar Tree for one item and then leave with one item. At least if you're not me. You go in for one item and you leave with $30 worth of random crap you had no idea existed or you needed before you went into the Dollar Tree. So, hence, we have our haul. I'm going to start with my most favorite thing I found at the Dollar Tree, which was this. It looks like the Adams Family, what was that, Thing? Is it Thing or It? It is the one with the hair, right? Because in It had the hair and you couldn't see its face thing was the hand that walked with the disembodied hand. I love Halloween. I love decorating for Halloween. And I'm like, oh yes, I got two of these uh, for my mantle display. Cause I mean, that's fabulous. I love the white ceramic things they have at Dollar Tree. This is, you've seen this in a lot of videos. This is my feather tray. I think it's meant for like putting rings on and stuff, but it's got ridges on it. It's perfect for like inks and watercolor and like scribbling off a watercolor crayon or a watercolor pencil to make yourself a little paint so you could pick it up. It's, it's, Fabulous. And if you don't need a big palette, it's just perfect. Love that. I love their little trinket dishes for that. Uh, I got a problem. What can I say? So anyway, white ceramic. Love it. Little little zombie hand. So cute. And to go with it, I got these votives. And they smell really good. And it says uh, Harvest Hayrides, which I've been on a hayride, folks. This does not smell like hayride. This smells like delightful cinnamon and apple pie baking. It's, it's actually really good. But sometimes the smells on some of the Dollar Tree candles and things can be kind of kind of gross, but these are really nice. And I love fall scented candles. I love like sugar cookie and um, pumpkin spice and all those cozy bakey smells. Cause I don't like to bake um, except for bread, but we're, you know, yeah, we're a bread, uh, we're in a bread break in the Wyrick house. So, um, so I just burn my candles and I'm not uh, crazy about cooking cookie cookies or anything like that, but uh, got that. That's lovely. Um, and I got these little scarves, which you're probably going to think they're the tackiest things, but I think, you know, this is quite a bit of fabric for a dollar. And this, and I thought actually, they, you know, they're not that, they're not that wimpy to use as a scarf, but actually what I got them for is to use them as a cute little head tie because I like to tie, especially when like, you know, like now when I've got like, you know, I'm sporting the like three week dark roots, you know, I'm going to tie this up and you can't see my dark roots. You know, you gotta, you gotta camouflage it so you can touch those babies up. And I might be going dark next because my tan's gonna be fading and then I will look like a zombie. Speaking of zombies, speaking of zombies, I will match the zombie hand in about, you know, a month when my tan fades. So, um, so I might go a little darker because I look too washed out with blonde hair and being super pale. Uh, so, and I, then I saw this one too and I thought this was really cute. It's a little, uh, it's like the uh, Mexican paper cuts. I just thought that was so cute. That would even be really cute as like a valence or something like that over a um, over a window. And I learned that in the UK they call a bed skirt a valence. That was one of my viewers told me that when I was talking about making a bed skirt last week. That hasn't happened yet, but I do plan on doing that sewing project this weekend. I uh, did a sewing project last weekend because I had to um, I had to run into I haven't been to Walmart since the pandemic. Uh, started and um, my one of my daughters, Maisie, had a swimmer's ear. Her, she's they, you know, been outside a lot this summer, um, and she had an earache. It just wasn't going away, and it was definitely an outer ear uh, ache, swimmer's ear situation. So I went in to find some swimmer's drops, swimmer's ear drops, because I thought Walmart's gonna have a huge selection. And plus, I was curious about what they had in the craft aisle. I thought I would wander around there, and I bought some fabric, and I recovered the cushions upstairs on a fake leather chair. I had a couple fake leather club chairs um, and they were just like, they'd seen better days. One of the cushions was really um, breaking up and stuff, the the like the faux leather stuff. So I, I did some cushion covers for that and I might make some, I might cover my my throw pillows to match that because I have plenty of fabric left over. But anyway, because I have like pretty cool, pretty good deal on fabric there. But anyways, 
I had went to buy the Swimmer's Ears Drops and I bought them and there was one kind and I asked the pharmacist because I couldn't find them. I got the last bottle because apparently it's there's been a lot of people with Swimmer's Ear and um, it's just this like 95% isopropyl alcohol and 5% glycerin. So I'm like, oh, I could have just used my Copic reinker probably for her ears. But anyways, it didn't work. And we had to go to the uh, the pediatrician to have a look at her ear and they prescribed these eardrops. And um, so they had to be from the pharmacy and the pharmacist had called and said, um, uh, gee, do you want to, do you want to call your uh, doctor and see if they want to prescribe something else? Cause those drops are $195. And, um, and this is a frugal thing. I am getting somewhere with this. And, um, and I said, well, she needs the, she needs the drops. But I said, but do you take like good RX or anything like that? And she said, yeah, if you can find a coupon or any of those things, we can absolutely take that. So I looked online in five minutes, I found that, and, and I'm, this isn't a commercial, I'm not sponsored by GoodRx, but I want to tell you this because um, it was like 60 bucks to use to use GoodRx and they honored that price and it would have been like $195 using our insurance. So if you don't have like a, a plan with a lot of, um, um, like uh, if you don't have a health insurance plan that has prescriptions, then definitely check that out. It doesn't have to be that brand. There's all kinds of different discount prescription, like coupon things. I couldn't believe it. Now, of course, that wouldn't go to my deductible. That $60 we paid for those drops wouldn't go to the deductible, but you know, you're not out 200 bucks. And you know, if you do have some situation where, you know, you get in an accident and you're spending, you know, you have over $10,000 in medical bills or whatever, um, you know, so that $50 wouldn't have come off your deductible. I mean, it's, we rarely, ever knock on wood, we rarely ever hit a deductible. So I thought I would just tell you that because if you are frugal and you try to save money, that is, if you don't often, you know, use prescriptions and you need one and then, you know, your plan doesn't cover it. I mean, that was like, that was 140 bucks back in our pocket. So gotta, gotta love that. Um, anyway, what was I talking about? Oh, Dollar Tree House. So is that why I was at the Dollar Tree? I, I totally, uh, I totally lost track of why, uh, well, how I got on that tangent, huh? And this is the second time I've recorded it. I, I did forget to mention it that time because I did want to mention that in case, you know, somebody, you know, maybe they've got to get a prescription for their kid or their parent needs a prescription or something like that. Hey, check it out. It doesn't hurt to look. It doesn't hurt to ask. And they're not, you know, they'll, it never hurts to ask. That's what I always say. It never hurts to ask. <laughs> uh, so continuing on, um, I get some cool stickers and I got, um, what was I got? I'm, I know I was going somewhere with the earache story and maybe it was because I bought fabric. I don't know. Anybody want a tutorial on how to make an envelope style pillow cover? <laughs> or are you all pillow covered up for my last tutorial? I don't know. Um, so I found these googly eye stickers, which I thought were really cute and they would be fun on like monster themed cards for Halloween or even animal themed cards. I thought they were really cute. Um, balloon animals. And you know they're good because they're called fancy stickers. I thought they were fancy when I saw them and then I was uh, I was confirmed when I read the label, fancy stickers. If you're fancy, these are the stickers for you. Got gummy bears, which I just totally think are cute because I love food themed and candy themed things. I got succulents, which will go great with the stamps that I designed for rubber stamp tapestry, the succulents set. I think that would look really cute with cards from that. And then some trees and yeah, I use trees a lot, tree stamps, eh, that'll work. Or they'll sit in my drawer for five years until I give them to my kids to stick on things or they won't be kids anymore. They'll be, they'll be adults and be like, mom, we're adults. We don't need stickers. <laughs> oh boy. Also in the Halloween theme, I got these cute little wooden um, signs. They're just hollow. They're like, um, they're like cradled wood panels, which is another frugal tip. If you want to paint on a cradled wood panel, like Masonite, these are just like Masonite panels. You can buy their artwork that are on those wood panels and just gesso them and paint over them. I mean, same deal. I don't see why there being any any sort of issue. If that's a sticker on there, you might want to peel it off. But I thought this would be cute on the mantle display with my disembodied hand and smelly candles. So, would you like a video on how I do my fall fall mantle? I know I've done fall mantles before. At least I think I have. I've done Christmas ones. But um, I'm ready. To, I'm ready to kick it up a notch. <laughs> kick it up. I'm going all out with the Dollar Tree. Uh, the to the Dollar Tree finds. Uh, I got some envelopes because slimline cards, I love things that fit in regular envelopes and I don't think I'm really jumping on the bandwagon because I'm not buying anything special for slimline cards, but I like how I could take a sheet of cardstock and I could get the base and then the leftover piece could be my layering piece. People say that they have all kinds of waste with slimline cards, slimline cards, that's hard to say, 
but I don't think you have to. If you, you know, cut your paper, you cut a third off and then you fold the rest of it and then you use that third part for layering, um, or you mix and match and you make some card bases and some layers and you swap them, swap them, swap them, swap them, swap them, swap them around so that you can get a variety of different colors and stuff. So that's why I got these. And you can always use envelopes if I, you know, if this trend peters out, if I do one more card, I'm like, yep, yeah, I'm good. Um, the envelopes will get used because I still mail like, you know, I still mail stuff. Um, and then I got these smaller ones because I thought, you know, that would be cute to do a mini slim line, a slim slim line, a, what would you call it? A skinny slim line, a tiny slim line. I don't know. Do you have a good name for that? Let me know. Uh, but I thought, cause this is like three and five eighths by six and a half. So if you did a three and a half by six, card. I think that'd be super cute. And then you could put three by five photos in there if you want to send them off to grandma or something. I think that's a fantastic idea. And then these I almost bought before, but I couldn't justify it because I didn't really need them for anything. And then we got a new printer and the printer is just kind of sitting. We, we, uh, we're in between computer desks. So the printer is sitting on top of a dresser and I've got a stack of photo paper and different papers and stuff. And it's not looking too great. So I thought these are kind of cute and I could set a couple next to each other. I probably only need two, but you know, if you, if you're going to buy something storagey at the Dollar Tree and you think you might need more, buy them all. You can always return what you don't need. Um, but you can rarely ever find that color you want because they change stuff out frequently. So I got four of those because that's how many they had. And I love that coral Lee melon color. I think it's really pretty and it, it's the same color as our hallway and you can see the hallway from like when the doors open where the dresser is. So we've got the teal wall, you've got the coral hallway, you've got the white trim. It's fantastic. I'm telling you, I like color. <laughs> Um, yeah, so there's that. And uh, so we got our haul out of the way. We've got uh, basic housekeeping out of the way. Oh, I did a review on these. I just wanted to mention it because um, last week when I mentioned these, and I know the sat chat videos get pushed out to everybody and you may not see the other videos in between the sat chats for whatever reason, YouTube loves to, uh, to show these videos probably because they love to pepper them with ads. By the way, I figured out, huh, YouTube, <laughs> I figured out where you hide those little ads and how to go in there and delete a bunch of them. So I did that last week and I didn't get any complaints about too many ads. So hmm. uh, you can do it right in the, there's a little tab and you can delete the breaks. You know, they had, they were putting them in last week before I caught it every three minutes. I was like, seriously, do you think people are going to watch that? They are not. I can tell you, they will complain. I've been hearing it. So, uh, so hopefully there'll just be a couple breaks and they'll be good. I don't think they can go back in and put them in if you've taken them out. I don't think so. I hope not. But anyway, so since last week I did the, uh, I did use these a few more times and I did an in-depth review. I still like them. I'm not as thrilled as I was, a, as I was when I first just, just open them up and try them a little bit. That's why I don't do first impression videos. Um, I might mention like an offhand comment about something, but I don't call a, I wouldn't call it a review. Um, but the, the video I did post was a review. And um, check it out if you're interested in these. That way you can go in with your eyes open if you're considering buying those. Um, and I think it's really important. A lot of, I'm seeing a lot of, uh, a lot of reviews. Actually, for the next thing I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna show you, I've been seeing a lot of quote unquote reviews that are more like first impressions. And I think it's kind of dangerous because, you know, when, when you hear the word review, you think you're going to get all the information you need to go forward to purchase a product. But um, <clears throat> if the person hasn't really used it more than just opening up the box and maybe swatching up colors, it's really not that, um, that in depth. And it really doesn't give you all the information that you need. Um, you might find that you like something more with more information. You might find some, that you like something less. And I think it's just important to put that out there. If you're going to call it a review, if you're going to call it a first impression, Hey, that's fine. You know, just be, uh, just be honest with it. Um, that's a pet peeve, pet peeve when people call things reviews when really they're just opening the box for the first time and showing you what they got. Uh, that's a haul folks. That's a haul. That's what we just did. That's a haul. That's woo. That's a haul. It's not a review. These might fall apart in a week. This, I'm not reviewing these and saying they're fa actually, I do have one of these. Um, and I've had it for a couple of years and it's pretty fantastic. <laughs> it's still, it's still kicking. No, no, no brittle, no cracking, nothing. Um, so I guess I could review that if I wanted to, um, be a pretty boring video. I think I just said all I need to say. Um, so anyway, the scandal that I mentioned with the, did I mention it? I don't know. This is the second time I recorded it. I might not have mentioned it, but, um, so last week I told you about, 
being excited about doing Inktober this year. I did it every day last year of October, every day of October. I was so happy that I completed it. I felt so proud of myself and I really felt my artwork level up. I wanted to draw hands better so I drew hands for the month of October every day. If you want to see those artworks, go to my Instagram uh, account, just instagram.com slash Lindsay Wyrick, I believe. And you can see, you scroll back and you can see the, the artwork. So I was really excited when Vaviva, the color sheet, the, they do like um, a watercolor and a sheet. They said they were partner, partnering with Inktober to release some sketchbooks. And um, I was very excited about that. This is one, actually, this tutorial is going to be up on Sunday. The uh, time lapse will be on Sketchbook Sunday, and the real time version of this will be up on Sunday in Critique Club. Maybe even, I usually get them up a little earlier, except last time I like completely forgot it was like Sunday afternoon. I'm like, whoops, <laughs> better publish that. Um, uh, so this will be up in Critique Club. If you're a member, you can check that out. I'll link to that if you want to learn more. Uh, it's Critique Club is uh, just a monthly membership group where you can upload your uh, two of your own paintings per month for critique. There's also two new tutorials every month, and you have access to the dozens of long format, more intermediate, advanced tutorials I've put up already. But anyway, um, that's the that's going to be this week's tutorial. It was funny because I took a picture. I was at Sudik Point last weekend, and I took a picture, and um, I took from two vantage points standing in the same spot. So I'm like, oh my gosh, I can use both of those photos and make a panoram pan panoramic painting. So I was kind of excited about that. So anyway, um, these are the, the watercolor sketchbooks. They're kind of like an off-white, kind of oatmeal kind of color. Very pretty. I really like the way the, the color sheets worked on them. I was just doodling around in there. And they have another one that's just um, like, just like a, there you can see the color sheet colors. It's more of a smoother, almost like the Stillman and Bird and the Arteza sketchbook papers that I like. Um, version. Nice sketchbooks. The new inks are beautiful. This is what they look like here. And there's 20 colors and they do have shades of, they have a white ink which is brand new for them and they've got some grays, like a couple like grays and blacks. And um, so it was very exciting. They've worked really hard on this. And then last Friday, it was after I filmed my sat chat, um, I got an email from them saying that um, they might have to scrap it. They might have to scrap the whole release. And they had ever, they had, had everything made already. And um, apparently what happened is that the, uh, the founder of Inktober, Jake Parker, was accused. He has a new book coming out later this month. And he was accused of plagiarizing another artist's drawing book. And this other artist, uh, Alfonso Dunn, put a hour-long video up on YouTube last, I don't know if it was last Saturday, that's when I saw it, um, saying that um, he saw a flip through the book on Jake's Instagram, and he thinks, actually, no, he he said, Jake Parker plagiarized my book, and that was, and, and then he spent the, 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 um, the hour video going through and showing the similarities. Now, a lot of people have asked me to, because this happened, I didn't know about this until after I had recorded my video, so I put a little disclaimer on the bottom saying, um, I don't know what's going up for Inktober, I don't know if these products will be available or not, but, um, you know, that's that's where it is. I linked to those that video so anybody else with questions could check it out themselves. This is, you can get those sketchbooks, you can get those ink sheets. They did go ahead with the release. Uh, they waited a few extra days just to see uh, what was going on. There's no new information. Um, there's been speculation about what happened. I mean, I just, I, it's like, I cannot see somebody, like, Alfonso Dunn has a big following, and his book is very popular, and it's well done, and I don't have it. I've just seen what he was showing online. I can't see somebody that, that's that big accusing somebody without any base of claims, without, like, having a reason. And, but I also can't see somebody as big as Jake Parker, who has illustrated tons of books and has this popular, valuable brand, um, stealing and plagiarizing from another artist because he would be risking everything. I just can't see, I just can't see it. It seems so, it's, it seems so unlikely on both accounts. And, um, and the fact that it's handled in the public, I think is, is very, uh, damaging because you've got a lot of artists that have watched Alfonso's video that have the torches and the pitchforks out and they are badgering, um, anybody that's sponsored any of the Inktober, um, like with Inktober products, anything like that, they're badgering them saying, cut ties with them, don't do it, cut ties with them, We're, we will not buy your products anymore if you do anything with Inktober. They're, they bullied, um, uh, they bullied Lightbox Expo to drop him and see that I heard that he was no, they were no longer having ties with him, but then that tweet just disappeared. So I don't know if like they decided not to because there's been nothing proven yet 
or what I've seen that DeviantArt has decided not to do Inktober Awards because of the scandal. And um, it just it's just such a shame. This is 2020 has been a real hard year. And to take away a month long art um, challenge that so many people enjoy, it just even to have it sullied, it just seemed it's just such a shame. It's the whole thing is a shame. And it's too bad it wasn't handled privately because there could have been a misunderstanding. I about six years years ago something similar happened to me where I was flipping through a, an art catalog and I saw one of my paintings in the catalog and I hadn't given them permission to use it and it was advertising a product I'd never used, and I was I was hurt and angry. I'm like, what the heck's going on? I was you know that was my first reaction, but then I calmed down. And I emailed the company and I said, look, my art was used without permission. Can um, you put me in touch with somebody that can explain what happened? Because um, I figured it could have been a mistake. Maybe they hired a graphic designer who grabbed the wrong image and plopped it in there. I mean, that could happen. There could have been an intern, you know, and I'm not going to go start accusing and suing and threatening when it could have been an honest mistake. And um, it turns out it was an honest mistake. It was a situation where a brand had... Um, put my artwork on their website and embedded a YouTube video because I was using their product and they that brand had told this company you can use anything from our website for the the catalog go ahead they had grabbed this thing they you know I'm sure like you know I I'm trying not to say names uh, this company did probably didn't realize that they had used it I'm hey you want to share my videos you want to embed my videos on your blog your website please share the love get the word out I'm certainly not going to start attacking people over that because I want my work shared um, um, and you know they grabbed this picture and you know it just it just got used inappropriately is bottom line it was a mistake but because I didn't go in guns of blaring they were so apologetic like we're so sorry here's a here's a gift card um, you know we're, we're so sorry can't believe that happened uh, but if it wasn't for that I never would have had an audience with this company this has been it's been one of my most um, one of my most lucrative collaborations with the with the brand ever and um, I have a great relationship with this brand and if it wasn't for that innocent mistake I never would, would have had a door open that I could even have talked to that brand before so that was a win-win situation I have a feeling this whole Inktober thing is going to be a a lose-lose situation for both parties um, I bet there'll be contra suits it's going to be ugly I bet and, um, and it's just a shame so let me know are you guys going to do Inktober or has this whole ordeal just put you off on the whole thing um, I want to do it, but I don't want to like incur the wrath of the cancel culture on social media. I, I don't want people to feel bad um, if they see that I'm doing Inktober because it's so polarizing. People are either Team Jake or Team Alfonso, and I I don't know. I watched the video twice, and I cannot say was this stealing or did two artists come to the same conclusion because it's a very customary way to teach people how to draw because it is. It is kind of common knowledge. So is it common knowledge or is it plagiarism? There's other books that have very similar diagrams that came out before um, before either of their books. And, you know, there's so many similarities there. Is this new book have a stronger similarity to Alfonso's book than any of the books that came before? I don't know. I honestly, I don't know. And um, it's just sad that it's playing out in the in the scope of public in the, in the court of public opinion, because you know, we're all we're all very ill-informed and we're only given a little bits of information. So it really isn't fair for us to be, you know, uh, for us to be deciding on that. So let me know in the comments below what you think. Um, I'm curious. I really think they're both talented guys and I hate to see anybody go down like that. So uh, that's all I have today. Uh, all the links for everything I talked about will be in the video description. I'm going to get out before my camera shuts up. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting and bye.